What's going on, Tar Heel Nation? It is your favorite North Carolinian, Russ the Tar Heel. And in this huddle, unfortunately, we got to talk about the 30 to 10 loss that the North Carolina Tar Heels suffered at the hands of the West Virginia Mountaineers in the Dukes Mayo Bowl in Charlotte, North Carolina. And from the jump, one of my buddies was telling me that was at the game, said it was like literally. 90 to 10 West Virginia to North Carolina fans, which is insane, bro. It's absolutely insane. I mean, we're in Charlotte. It's North Carolina. And the fact that Tar Heel Nation, you know, um, and I get it, man. I understand the frustration completely. Back-to-back -back years where we're on the verge, the cusp of doing something huge, um, you know, the, the relegated to the Dukes Mayo Bowl. You know, and, and so I understand, but it's still frustrating nonetheless. And we expected the West Virginia fans to travel. It's not a very long trip. You know that that's what they stink and do. They love college football. And uh, apparently they packed Bank of America Stadium and they got a hard-earned win. First play from scrimmage, a 75-yard bomb by Garrett Green with Chapman covering and uh, it was just off to the races from the jump. I thought it was going to get stinking ugly. I really did. It was just like, here we stink and go. Off to the stinking races. But the Carolina defense didn't necessarily play atrocious, if you will. They came to play. They really did, man. They came to play. And I actually enjoyed what I saw out of Amari Campbell. I really did, man. That was the one guy who I was really looking at. Cayman Rucker was doing Cayman Rucker things all stinking night. That's what he does. Getting his hands in the passing lanes, getting pressure on the quarterback, making tackles out on the edge. Cayman did what Cayman did. I was really looking at Amari, and I really think Amari Campbell is going to be a special linebacker for Carolina. I really do. I really do, man. The way that he fills the hole, the way that he was taking on blocks, he was making sure they didn't get outside leverage. He was making the tackle off the block. The kid's going to be good, man. So I am really impressed with what I saw from 17. Really impressed from what I saw from him. But the defense as a whole, once again, gave up 30 points. And West Virginia was without their starting tailback, Donaldson, and their starting center. You know, And, yeah, they had everybody else. And West Virginia had more of their team than Carolina had their team. But I just – I still don't understand, you know, how this is what we have almost night in and night out. 30 to 10. 30 to 10. You know, th there are very few ways that you can say that that's okay. You know, I just uh, I can't I can't understand it for the life of me, man. Um, and it, it's it's like I said, mixed emotions. Because on one half, I can I can honestly say that I saw the kids play. They played. They didn't lay down. It wasn't anything like the NC State game. It wasn't anything like the Duke's Mayo Bowl when they played South Carolina back in 2021. It was nothing like that. They played. But West Virginia just had more. And, uh, yeah, they had more of their starters than we did, too. But um, it's still 30 to 10, man. 30 to 10. That's, that's tough. It's tough to live with, man. And I just feel like, you know, giving up a 30 spot once again, you know, you guys know where I'm going to go with this. And most of you know how I feel about Coach Mac Brown. Um, Nobody's pushing him out, and he said that he's coming back, so we're just going to move on from that because we can beat that horse until it's you know into the ground. Um, but I think that one thing is for sure, if you ask me, and that is that there is no legitimate way that you can justify to Tar Heel Nation for keeping Gene Chizik. There's none, man. There's none. And I, look, I appreciate that he's a good guy, and you know, he does great things for the kids and he has a great relationship and et cetera, et cetera. But that's not what we need. 
All right? It's not what we need, man. That's, that's all great. But we're here to win football games, and this is a results-oriented business, or at least it should be. And if you're not, you know, if you're not making it happen, bro, we got to find somebody that can. We got to find somebody that can. Now, on the flip side of that, because we've just talked about the defense, what I saw from Connor Harrell was was promising. Um and it's sad because the kid was not given much of a chance at all. He was running for his stinking life. I saw Spencer Rowland get beat a couple of times. I even saw Willie Lampkin be, get beat a couple of times. And you know what? They're they're trying to they're trying to work on their mesh, obviously, because Lampkin moves over to center. And he had a couple of moments where you could see that this is a fairly it's a newer position for him this year, even though he did play it at Coastal Carolina before he came to UNC. Um there were times where it just seemed like the offensive line was not on the same page. And Connor was running for his stinking life. And they didn't give him much of a chance, especially in the second half, man. It, uh, it seemed to get worse as time went on. But, you know, Connor had the, the first interception he threw. You know, if, if Bryson Nesbitt or John Copenhaver are running that route, they're probably going to reach up and snag it. It's a tough throw, but Deems May is just, uh, you know, he's he's – He's a walk-on for a reason. There's, there's no other reason, to, no other way to put it. It's a tough fit, but with the right personnel, it's probably a touchdown pass. So I kind of waved that one off. Waved that one off. The second one was just a really good defensive play. Um, kid goes up one-handed, little zone coverage where he kind of faded out. Connor probably didn't see him. Try to uh, just put a little touch, touch pass over the top to Deems May once again. And uh, Kid just, he fell back into coverage, picked it off with one hand, and, um, you know, that's where we were with the two interceptions. They weren't, neither one of them are, were what are you doing plays. You know what I'm saying? They Neither one of them were like, oh my goodness, what in the heck did you see? You know, they were, you can live with the two picks. Yeah, one was in the end zone, it stunk. Hate it. But you understand what is in his mind and obviously, you, you're, you're looking also at if he has that right personnel in there, it's probably going to be a touchdown catch, so you can live with it. The touchdown pass that he threw to J.J., J.J. got away with a little push-off, but J.J. had a really good game once again, man. I mean, he just – the guy's a football player, and I, I really – if we can get J.J. the ball more, I think it just bodes well for the Carolina offense. So, box score – Connor Harrell goes 18 for 27, 199 yards, 7.4 yards per attempt, one touchdown, two interceptions. At one time, he had 50 rushing yards in the game. That was until he started getting sacked like every three plays. So he finishes with 17 rushes, 25 yards, one and a half yards per carry, but in the first half, Connor was was uh, he was lights out with his feet, man. And you saw what he brings to the table. Amarian Hampton had a rudimentary 19 carries for 62 yards, only three and a half yards per carry. They really tried to get him inside, but once again, the the offensive line did not do him any favors, man. Didn't do Omarion any stinking favors, and uh, you know he was a bell cow. I think he had 12 carries. 12 carries at the end of the first quarter, if I'm not mistaken. So he finishes the game. They went away from him, only seven. And maybe that was what they were attempting to do. I don't know, man. I really don't stick and know. It'll be interesting to see what Max says in his press conference. Gavin Blackwell led the team with three receptions for 78 yards. Uh, he had that long of 47. J.J. Jones had four for 53 with a touchdown. Nate McCollum had five for 41. Um, Christian Hamilton had three for 20. And then O'Marion Hampton had three for seven. Garrett Green, kid's a football player, man. You got to give him his props. Is he going to put up just ridiculous numbers? No, not necessarily. But he went 12 for 24, 228 yards passing, including that 75 yarder to start the game with one touchdown. That was his touchdown pass. But he also had nine carries for 64 yards, 7.1 yards per carry. And time after time, bro, when they let him get outside of the pocket 
and get to the sideline. He was making plays out on the edge, bro. He was also making plays cutting it up, man. He did have that 48-yarder in the second half that was kind of like a backbreaker. And um, you got to give him his props, man. Uh, Carolina didn't do too bad against Jaheim White. Uh, 12 carries, 50 yards, 4.2 yards a carry. He did have a touchdown. He had a real good run uh, down on the goal line where he cut it up. I think he broke power ankles. Power Eccles down. Gave him a real good move, cut it up inside, scored a touchdown. Um, you know, but they kind of bottled him up for all intents and purposes, better than I thought that they would, because I thought that he was going to kind of run rampant. Um, he has that ability. So, like I said, the defense didn't play bad, man. They didn't play bad. They just didn't have the horses, bro. And that was kind of the most frustrating part. Carolina finishes with 199 yards passing. West Virginia pass, passes for 228 yards. Um, Carolina rushes for a buck 40. West Virginia turned it up in the second half, 160, 64 yards. Um, you know, 5.5 yards per rush. And, and, and like I said, man, that is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Six yards, man. You're getting six yards a pop. Something's got to change, guys. Something's got to change. And it starts with the top. But if the top is in the position where he says, I go when I want to go, you at least got to stink and change the defensive coordinator, man. And we have got to get a stinking dog in there, man. And I think personally – I understand that the offenses, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're so interested in getting five defensive backs on the field because people are throwing it around. I think it has to do with the 4-2-5, man. I really do. That's just my personal perception. I like three backers, even if there's a smaller guy playing on that strong side that can cover. And I know that that's asking a lot, but, you know, you, you can't continue – to get just gashed up the middle, you know, because um, now you got fullbacks and H backs and linemen on nickels, and you know something's got to change, man. That's just that's just my personal perception, man. Something's got to change because you know we can't continue to give up thirty points a game and just pretend like everything's okay. It's not okay. I don't care who you're playing. It's not okay. And uh, until we get someone different calling defensive plays with a different scheme, a different philosophy, and obviously, like I said, I think that it even starts with Mac. You know, if I had my way, we'd 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 be going into this season, this uh, this this uh, off season, looking for you know somebody that's going to take his spot that's not currently on this coaching staff. But that's not going to happen. So the next best bet is he needs to have a talk with Gene. Hey, brother, I appreciate everything you've done. You're a good dude. Try to find you another job, man, but uh, you just can't work here anymore, plain and simple. So like I said, dude, West Virginia, they came out. They handled business all the way from the crowd to their football team. Their coaching staff called a game that uh, you know was going was gonna to put them over the top. And that's what they did. They beat the North Carolina Tar Heels 30 to 10. And that means that Mac Brown is one and four in bowl games. One and four. And uh, I don't think that that's what a lot of us expected. I don't think that's what a lot of us expected. And we go into the offseason kind of heads down, wondering, you know, Drake May is gone, Tez Walker's gone, just a lot is leaving. And we're just kind of like, man. Like, where do we go from here? I mean, an exhausting season, to say the least. To say the least, man. Just an exhausting season. And um, I don't know what else to say, guys. Carolina finishes 8-5, and five, man, with another stinking bowl loss. And um, two in a row in the state of North Carolina. And I just think that's unacceptable, man. But... There's always next season, right? So we'll see. Be interested. Max Johnson, Connor Harrell going into the spring. We'll be obviously keeping up with that. Be an interesting quarterback battle because those are two completely different quarterbacks. Um, obviously, hopefully, Carolina keeps O'Marion 
and uh, hopefully we get somebody that can stink and run this defense, man, a competent defense. We're going to need it next year. So, anyway, I want to thank all of Tar Heel Nation, man, for, for, for our first complete season, man. It has been a stinking blast, minus the stinking losses, minus the second half of the season. But I've really gotten – I've really gotten a lot and a lot of joy, man, of meeting all you guys and hanging out with you guys during football season. So, like I said, man, we're going into the spring, going into the summer. We got eight months before Carolina football again. Let your buddies know, man. Let them know about the Tar Heel Huddle so that next year we can do it even bigger and better. And for the real Carolina fans, man, you already know, bro, we're right in the middle of basketball season too, brother. So, y'all make sure that y'all hang out. For that, man. Anyway, hey, it was, it's was it been fun, guys. I love you. Make sure you hit that like, share, subscribe button. Comment down in the comment section what you think about this game against West Virginia. I want to know what you think about Tar Heel Nation, about the coaching staff, the state of the program. Put it all down here, man. And I'm definitely going to be doing a video about the scope of the season, if you will, later on. So uh, definitely look out for that. Anyway, I love you guys, man. We'll catch you next season, bro. We'll see you later, Tar Heel Nation.